Hi all, this is Maria Clark at Sweet Willow Designs and welcome to my studio. Before we get started, I want to encourage you to subscribe and if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for all of your support over these years. I hope you enjoy this project. Let's get started. So let's talk about the tools and materials. I'll be using a wonderful palette of fall colors. All of the colors are the Americana Deco Art acrylics. Um, I do have a couple of multi-surface, the Americana multi-surface satin paints that I'll use. Uh, use the colors that you like, but these are a beautiful fall uh, palette to include some yellows and oranges, uh, a purple, and um, some greens. All of the colors are listed in the description below and in the ebook if you choose to pick up the ebook. In addition to my paint, I'll be using the Deco Art Pouring Medium, and I've just put it in this little uh, squeeze bottle so that I can control the amount a little better. And I'll be using the Deco Art Americana Duraclear Ultra Matte Varnish, the Serral Transfer Paper, and my regular set of dotting tools. Now I'm really proud of this ebook. Um, I really enjoy putting these patterns and these ebooks together. And I'm trying something um, a little different with my ebooks. This is a 13 page ebook that um, will have some printing instructions. Uh, it'll have tools. It'll have the color palette laid out for you. Um, it will have a color guide that you can use to follow along in the video and the colors that I'm using in this particular pattern. Um, it'll also come with five sizes of the pattern. And what I like about the way I'm doing this particular one is this is these are full size patterns. So what you can do is you can check your tools against the pattern to find out which tools work for you because we're not all using the same tool set. I like the um, crystallite acrylics, uh, rods, uh, the crochet hooks, and a set of nail dotters. Some of you might use um, other nail uh, dotters or tools that you have in your toolkit. So what you do is you just check it out against the pattern and find a tool size that corresponds to the size of dot in the pattern. One thing I do want to remind you of is that your paint spread. So you might go a slightly smaller to account for that. I'm also using a 10 by 10 stretched canvas and I'm going to mix a very dark green. I'm using the dark um, Hauser green with a little bit of black so that I can get a deep background. I didn't want a black background. I kind of wanted to stick with green. So I'm just using a wide flat brush and I'll apply that to the canvas, let it dry. It'll actually take me, I think, a couple of coats to get this completely set up. Then I'm choosing the size of pattern that works. This is the eight inch and this will fit on a 10 by 10 canvas or round or whatever you're using. And again, here I am just kind of checking out the tools that um, you know I could use in this pattern to sort of decide which ones are going to work out best for me. And then it's just a matter of cutting out around the outer edge of this circle, the pattern. And then once I get it cut out, I'm going to fold it because I want to find the center and then I want to give myself some guide marks. Uh, so that I can apply it to the canvas because I'm going to use the transfer paper to transfer the pattern. So I've uh, folded this in fours so that I have the quadrant and then I'll just snip a little bit out in the center here so that I can see the center. And then I'm going to snip um, a little bit off of each of the corners and these are kind of going to give me registration marks that I can then use uh, to line this up on my canvas because I'm going to take two passes at the transfer of this so I want to be able to line it up well. So just do that snipping and I'm ready to put it onto the canvas. I am going to find the center just by going corner to corner and getting a little mark on the center and I'm using my ceramic pencil that I just love, one of my favorite tools. All right, and then I'm able to take the pattern traceable. And because I cut out the center, I can find the center. And then I'm marking what's the top and uh, the top on the canvas and the top on the pattern. So when I line it back up, I know which way I, I put it. And I'll do a little bit of tape so it doesn't move around. 
And then I'm using the Serral Transfer Paper. Uh, just choose a, a color. I think uh, white seems to be the best for these darker ones. And I will just slip that under there and I will start to trace it with one of my uh, ball styluses. I'm going to first trace this center circle uh, because I'm going to paint that. Now you can skip this step if you don't care to do that, but I wanted to get a little bit of a purple background. So I'm using the, um, the uh, Brilliant Purple and I'm just going to fill that circle in using a small flat brush. And this will take me several coats. It probably, I think, ended up taking me three coats of paint to get this uh, where I wanted it in terms of the richness of the color. And there it is, it's complete. And now I'm ready to get this canvas back on here or this pattern back on the canvas so that I can trace out the rest of the pattern. I'll find the center again. And then I'll light it up with my registration marks and then also with the center point. I didn't take that tape off from the previous time I used it. And I'll slip that paper under there. And I'll start to trace this pattern. These are going to have these elongated um, swooshes in various sizes kind of in um, sort of a spiral shape. They're going to fan out a little bit. And then I've uh, finishing up. The last step is to actually draw in the outer circle. I'm going to trace around the edge so that I get um, a nice circle for putting my last uh, row of dots on the outside of this main design. So just be sure that you've got that last circle marked. And then I'm just going to gently lift it to see if I missed anything and I'll be able to go back in and trace anything if I feel like I did. So I got a little bit here that I want to be sure I've traced on. Okay, and now we're ready to start painting. I'm going to use the pattern to check for the size of tool that I think is going to work. And I ended up choosing the L11 8mm for the center and I'm using the multi-surface cocoa bean to put down my center dot. So that'll be a center dot of brown. Then I'm using one of my very smallest nail dotters and the saffron yellow to put a row around the center dot. And I'm using quite a small stylus because I want to get 16 around. Now, one thing I want to say is, you know, don't sweat it. If you if your dots are a little bit bigger, then just go with eight or twelve. Um, you don't have to do, you know, exactly as the pattern because we all, you know, have a different pressure, different paint uh, consistency. So adapt as you can. I'm using a slightly larger nail dotter now, and I'm going in between that that row, the first row of saffron yellow, and placing another row of saffron yellow. And when I need to, I just dot it again to get a little extra paint there so I have a consistent size set of dots. I am dipping each time uh, before I put that dot down, but um, sometimes I need a little extra paint. Now I'm using a larger nail dotter. This is the largest one in my set in the bright orange, and I'm going in between the previous row of dots and placing that row of orange. Do you like the way this looks on top of the purple? I like how some of the leaves in the fall have that little bit of purple in them, so I wanted to add that. I thought it looked really nice. Okay, now I'm going to be using, uh, I'm going to be making these um, sort of elongated teardrops. And I'm putting down some paint, and then I'm using a small nail stylus to just pull that paint down. Now this particular one that I'm doing um, is paint straight out of the bottle and this is the the avocado. 
uh, the avocado green. And I'm just pulling that paint down to fill in the space um, that I drew from the pattern. One thing that I found as I was doing this is that those are really pretty long um, teardrops. So I ended up deciding that my paint needed to be a little bit more fluid than it was. You can see here it's taking quite a bit to sort of fill in that space. So I ultimately decided that I needed a little bit the paint to be a little bit more fluid. I don't want to add too much water because it really does affect the paint. So I'm using here um, some of the DecoArt pouring medium that I've just put in a little smaller container so that I can control it better when I'm using such a small amount. And I'm putting it in uh, my paint well with the paint and trying to flu get that a little bit more fluid. I'll also drop in just the teeniest little bit of water so that it's more fluid. And then I'll apply the top part of paint with the end of one of my uh, uh, dotting tools that are roughly the same size as the top uh, part of this um, teardrop. And then I can start to pull it down. And this is much, much, much easier um, than how I was doing it straight out of the bottle. So I liked having the pouring medium and I thought that made uh, the paint smoother and it also made it easier for me to fill in. So a little bit of pouring medium goes a long way. And I'll just fill those in. And I'll do that all the way around with my first medium green. And that's how that first uh, row of the teardrops is going. Now I did let that dry uh, before I moved on just because I tend to get in the paint a little bit. So I want to um, be sure that I've, I've got it dry. And then I'm doing the same thing. This is with the Hauser light green and I'm uh, putting in the pouring medium and just a tiny little bit of water, mix that up until I get a nice consistency. And I'll do exactly the same thing um, with this particular color, uh, just on the different size the different size of the teardrop there. This paint glides on so much easier with the pouring medium. I'm really happy with the way that's, that's turning out. And now I'm going into the small uh, teardrops with the darkest green, which is the um, the um, Hauser dark green and just did the same pouring medium mix and fill those in and I think that's looking great now I'm going to start to move out in my pattern again check your tools against the um, full-size illustration for the size that you're using one of the things that um, I did as I was testing out this pattern is I did do this on a um, one of those plastic chargers that have a metallic finish that I got from the Dollar Tree and I like the way it turned out I use slightly different colors in retrospect I would use a little more contrast I think because it is a metallic background but at the end of the video I'll show you that so you can get an idea as to what it might this pattern might look like on other surfaces I think this would be great as a trinket dish I actually think this would be really pretty in winter colors um, if you used you know, blues and grays. I might try that because I think that would be really pretty. I put a reference dot of the bright orange with my G6 four millimeter. And then I went in with my P16 11.5 millimeter and the scarlet and put a large dot right above that one. And then I'm going in with my largest nail dotter and the saffron yellow. And notice that I did um, the center dot and then I did another large dot before I started to walk the dots so that it would carry all the way around. See how nice and easy it is to follow along closely to the, uh, to the pattern. Now I'm going in again, another row, but I'll add three rows of the same dot, same size before I start walking the dots down. Here's my third row. And you can see that I added four of the large size dots before I started walking them down. Now 
Now I'm going in with my G6 four millimeter and the bright orange and I'm placing a little crown of dots in the center. Then using my large nail dotter, I'm going to put three of the same size dots before I start walking down on either side. Just one, two, three, and I'll start walking it down. Now I'm using my G6 four millimeter and a color called Paprika. It's kind of a burnt orange kind of color. It's a little, it's quite uh, a bit deeper, you can see, than the bright orange. And then I'm putting a little reference dot at the top because I want to be sure to stop there. And then I'll go back and I'll do my large nail dotter. And I'll put three of the same size dots before I start walking them down. And then I'm going to have a, quite a few dots that are the same size. So I switch to a smaller nail dotter and I'm dipping each time into the paint and I'm just going to try to fill up the remaining uh, portion of that line. And that completes that one section. So I'm going to do that one more time, a little bit faster, and then uh, we'll just do that same pattern all the way around. I'm glad to be able to get back to painting a little bit. Um, if you've been following my channel or watching some of my more recent videos, you know that we've been uh, having some challenges in our family with a serious health issue with my son. And um, I think um, we've been dealing with that for about 10 months now. And uh, I can't say that things are completely uh, on track, but... Um, I think they're better and so we won't have um, any treatments or anything that have to happen for the next six weeks. So um, we're going to try to be as normal as we can. I hope all of you are doing well. These are difficult times for everybody. All right, I've gone ahead and finished uh, that particular row. Now I'm ready to start on the next sections and I'm using the um, Hauser light green to place a dot. It's, it's another reference dot and this is a technique that I use to kind of keep my spacing going well. Even though I have a pattern here I do like to do the reference dots just to make sure that I know what my spacing is supposed to be like. And now I'm going in with my P16 11.5 millimeter and the Brilliant Purple and I'll place that all the way around I like that pop of purple. I think that's really pretty. Let me get the last one down. Now I'll do these swooshes on the side. And I am using the Scarlet and my large nail dotter and just dragging that paint down. I'm not using the uh, pouring medium here because um, this is so, such a small uh, swoosh that I don't really need to do that. The other ones were so large that I found it helpful. Now, when I have to stop and go back, I do try to drop down like you, you saw me. I didn't get that paint all the way down to the to where I wanted it to be. I use a smaller tool to try to drag it down a little bit. And now I'm using that paprika and pulling that next swoosh. If 
Fall is such a great time of year, so many pretty colors. We've already had snow in Colorado, by the way. We had that snow in September, and so we'll get prepared to have some more by the end of this month, I think. And now I'm using my G6, four millimeter and scarlet, and I'll put a crown right above that purple. And then use my small nail dotter to put a little a dot right above that crown. And I will do that all the way around. I hope that all of you are finding time to paint and give yourself a little respite. I find that I need it to kind of get away a little bit and relax my mind and you know, focus on something uh, besides the day-to-day -day activities. We're still not back to normal here. Uh, we don't go out much except to the grocery store or whatever. Um, you know, so we're still pretty, pretty much stay at home uh, at this time. Let me know how you all are doing in the comments. I'd really like to hear. Okay, I've done that all the way around. Now the next step is to go around this outside edge. So you kind of get a look at this pattern, how it's developing, and I'm gonna go around and I'm going to finish that up and put my dots on the outside. Now, it's really handy to have these guide marks here. I'm using my G6 four millimeter and the Hauser light green. I put it on each uh, dot on each of the marks, the center, and then um, in the center again. And I'm leaving a little bit of space because I want to add some purple there. And it's really handy to have these measurements because I, I like, um, yeah, precise is not a good word really when we're talking about this because I, I'm not precise but I like to have a little bit of guideline so that I get a little more consistency, I'll say it that way. All right, so I've got that, that uh, border all the way around. And now I'm going to go in with a small nail dotter and just drop a little bit of purple there. There we go, that's all the way, finishing up all the way around here. And this is how the pattern looks so far. Now I'm going to go ahead, I've let this, uh, at least the center of this dry, because it's been overnight. And I am taking off um, the marks um, I let it dry uh, even further to get all of this paint dry. And now I'm just going to look at this and decide what else I want to do in terms of filling it in. You can see that my original pattern and the one that you have calls for the reference dot of the bright orange. I'm going to fill out some more and I'm going to look at my top dots and see what I want to do uh, with the top dots to kind of fill this in. So I am going to add a dot of the scarlet and I'm using a smaller size tool. I'm just going to drop in some little bits and pieces here and there where I think I want to fill in some of the space. So you can see I'm adding a little bit of additional dots where I feel like there's a gap. Um, these aren't in the pattern because, you know, depending on how you paint, you may or may not have these particular gaps. But I've added a little bit there to pull that out a bit. I feel like I want to add a little bit of top dotting to these uh, teardrops. So I'm going in with a lighter color. Get a nice contrast there. And then I'll pull that down to the center. So 
So again, using uh, the darkest green, I'll start to put some contrasting top dots. And pull that down. There we go. On the smaller one, another contrast. And I've done that all the way around. This is where you can use your artistic license to kind of decide how you want the top dotting to work. A, a metallic color, a gold, would be nice, introducing gold at this point. I'm using some scarlet and I'm putting in a dot right above those small teardrops. All right, I'm going to fill in a little bit of space here under these main petals. And I just used my G6 four millimeter to add two dots on either side of the one I had placed earlier, small nail dotter, and then I'll uh, walk some dots up the side of this large teardrop. And I think that fills that space in nicely. Okay, I've done that all the way around. Just take a look here and see if you want to add anything more. I'm going to start top dotting again. I'm using the um, cocoa bean on the um, those scarlet dots for the petals. And then I'm using the uh, avocado green on those purple dots, the large purple ones. Then I'm going around with the uh, avocado and dotting on the outer row. I'm just adding some little embellishments. Sometimes you want to tone down the color palette a little bit. Like that was that orange or that green and purple was looking a little Halloweenish to me, actually. So I wanted to tone it down a little bit. So I put some top dots of another darker green. So let's just keep looking at this and see what else we might want to add. This is how we're looking so far. Of course, I am letting this dry in between each um, series of top dots. Put a little yellow, saffron yellow in the center there. And that's how we're looking so far. I've come back, I've let this dry. And now what I've decided to do on the outside is I like a little bit of texture. Um, I decided that that would look great on this one. So I'm using the exact same color that I mix. So you want to mix up enough color. Um, I using the exact same color of the background paint. And this is just going to give it a little bit of texture. Um, and so you can see that I'm just using different size tools to put down dots, filling it in as much as I think I need to. And this gives a really pretty effect um, to your final painting. So here's how we're looking so far. And you can see that texture reflecting in the light. Now that's all dry and I come back and show you what this looks like. I've added a little bit more top dotting and this top dotting, if you get the ebook, is in, there's a reference, a color reference that's in there that you can see the top dotting. So I've gone ahead and added some more top dotting where I felt I needed to, some per, using some purple and green. And that's the final. Now I'm ready to varnish it. It's been drying for uh, days. And I am going to be using the DecoArt DuraClear Ultra Matte. Now, I don't think I've used the Ultra Matte before in a video. Um, 
I prefer matte varnishes. So I usually use the matte, the uh, DuraClear matte. It has a little bit of a sheen. I thought I'd try the DuraClear Ultra Matte and see how that worked. So I put it in a separate container. Uh, I like to put a little teeny bit of water in to get a little thin. And then I'm putting thin coat. So you can see it going on here. I'll put something under my, so I can preserve my table there a little bit more and then I'll just start coating it so I'm putting on one very very thin coat and um, just brushing it on one way and then brush the other way make sure I get my sides already you can see the difference because it really is making even though it's not a high gloss it is making those colors really stand out so I very much like that you don't want to overwork this, but I do want to make sure that it's covered. Okay, and I will let that dry. I ultimately added three coats of varnish, and this is what it looks like. So you can see there's a very slight sheen. I love the matte. I think that looks so good, and I'm really, really, really happy with the way that turned out. I mentioned earlier in the video that I had done a charger on this copper metallic plate that I got, uh, charger plate that I got at the Dollar Tree. So on this charger, I did use all multi-surface paints. Uh, you want to be sure that you're using the right paint for the substrate that you're using. So use a, a good multi-surface paint. And I really do like the way it, it uh, turned out. A little more contrast, I think, would have been nice, but I'll, overall, I, I'm pleased with it. I want to thank you so much for joining me in my studio today. I hope that you all are well. Don't forget to subscribe. Give me a, th a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for joining me in my studio. Take care.